After consistent cloud outages over the past year, especially, GitHub has decided, or should I say Microsoft, has decided that GitHub should migrate to Azure fully. <laughs> Hello, my name is Chavdar, software engineer for 12 years, currently a director of engineering. And today I'm covering the story of how Azure is going to gobble up GitHub. <laughs> In this video, we're going to cover the reasons of why GitHub is going to be migrating to Azure according to their CTO. Feature development is being put on pause. GitHub has to migrate its own metal SQL servers. Oh boy. How do the cloud outages actually tie into the whole thing? And finally, we're going to talk about what the future looks like for GitHub on Azure. GitHub has been through a lot lately, with their CEO finally leaving in August and Microsoft's own henchmen finally getting fully entrenched in the ecosystem. We've seen mass layoffs. A lot of positions have been reduced. A lot of positions have been completely removed. And based on friends that work at GitHub, most people do not dare ask for a promotion because they're afraid that that will put their job at risk. And this is all part and parcel for any big corporate acquisition, especially corporate acquisitions related to Microsoft itself. We have seen this happen in the past and we're definitely going to see this going on in the future. But this also bodes a very interesting question for the timing of the move. Right as the CEO is being put out and the new Microsoft staff comes in, the company is faced with its largest challenge to date, which interestingly enough is spun by the CTO's email saying that if the company is to remain alive, it needs to scale out of the Virginia data center and onto the Azure cloud, which Fair enough, but from doing a migration like this myself in the past at a much, much smaller scale, I'm really sorry. If you work for GitHub especially, please pipe in in the comments, but man, I am very sorry for you. The pain is real, and remember, the stakeholders rely on you, but also another company's stakeholders could rely on you too. It's up to you to make the jump, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, the point is that according to leaked memos, GitHub is running at capacity in Virginia. Now, why are they running at capacity in Virginia? Because of AI features and all of the AI slop that my favorite platform of many, many years has been getting bombarded with, and a lot of slop that is, let's be honest, who even uses this shit? I mean, I don't. Do you? Let me know. We have Claude. Would you really use Copilot if Claude is there? But I guess the answer is corporate probably does because Copilot has been getting bundled in basically every single package for the past couple of years. And there's another interesting story that also mentions that apparently Copilot is not mandatory, but it was sold as being mandatory. But apparently you need to go in a, in a bunch of cancellation menus and go really deep down to actually remove it from your subscription, which means that any big corporate company is just going to be like, ah, $10. Screw it, let's go. And they bundle Copilot, and then the Copilot stuff just comes jumping in on you, and it's like, haha, do you want me to use some of your nice information and give value to you? And in reality, we are adding constraint to data centers, burning a lot of fossil fuels for energy and so on and so forth. There's there's a huge environmental impact to the AI thing that we all know, I, I hope. Now, the point here is that this is a self-created problem by Microsoft. In their eyes, this is not a problem problem because they've been one of the largest investors in AI as of the beginning. And I would even credit them as the very first people to really pump the AI bubble. But I guess we're too late now, so we might as well talk about it, right? And the, the corporate logic really, does, <laughs> really boggles the mind, doesn't it? I don't mean to go on a rant here, but really think about it. Microsoft is desperate for a huge win in AI. They hedge their bets by going deep into OpenAI and then going deep into Copilot and then blocking Cursor from VS Code. How did they bungle the VS Code? lead that they had for many, many years, especially during the large adoption during COVID, through a lot of meetings. I swear this is this is a quote, through meetings and corporate blockages. So this seems like a similar problem created by their own making and their scale. Microsoft is essentially too big at this point and problems like this are just going to continue happening where they need to look at their biggest investments and how they're going to pump up those investments to make them seem as obviously mandatory for the scale and growth of the company. Similar to how their investments in AI and primarily open AI have been kind of hidden in the investor notes that they released to the public under other expenses, I think it was, or something similar. There was a news article on this recently. Man, I just, Microsoft is, is such a, anyway. <laughs> 
So anyway, this is the stated reason for why we're moving GitHub to Azure. Now, let's talk about the consequences. Feature development is going to be put on ice. This, frankly, makes a lot of sense. Let's be honest, what else will you do? <laughs> Especially because this move is quoted as existential to the company by their CTO, meaning that the CTO's boss is saying, hey, bro, we cannot keep pumping AI slop into the people thanks to our Virginia data center and all of the neighbors deciding to put their data centers in Virginia and ruining the neighbors' quality of life. Which, by the way, I have a video covering this kind of topic. Feel free to go have a look. Having been through this myself, I know that feature development being put on ice is extremely painful. For reference, I'll give you some background on the project that I did at ARM, migrating the internal testing infrastructure from on-prem, essentially in our own data center in an airport, to the cloud. And man, it was a nightmare. It, it was a t similar timelines for us as well. Similar impact, i.e. features being put on hold outside of business critical features. And we had to keep both operational at the same time. And it was one of the hardest projects I've ever executed on in my life. And it was at a microscopic scale compared to this. Man, I, I'm a very empathetic person and customer pain really hurts me. I cannot imagine how the open source evangelists at GitHub are going to be feeling going forward and really the pain that they're going to be going through because new features also means bug fixes. Not all bug fixes are going to be put on ice, but let's be honest, a lot of bug fixes are going to be related to the move, to the rolling out of more features being hosted on Azure, bugs with cloud hosting. Azure itself is just a horrible platform from what I've heard. Never worked on it, thank God. But man, cloud in general is just such a... I love it, but it's so cursed, man. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Working with cloud is such a curse. I I don't know how we got into this darkest timeline. Seriously, it's, it's scary. Anyway, the point is that we, the users of GitHub, are going to suffer going forward. You will see. Mark my words. <laughs> Not to be a doomer or anything, but man, there's always things to improve and there's always things to optimize. And a lot of those features are going to be pushed back. The timelines for this migration are, and it's a very interesting quote. Initially, the CTO pulls the classic corporate move of, we have enough time. You have two years, 24 months. In reality, the, take, the move should take 18 months with a six-month buffer. But due to rapidly scaling AI expectations from us, we really need to finish it in 12 months. So 24 months into 12 months into, let's be honest, in a couple of months, we'll be like eight months in. Hey, why is the migration not done? Brother, what do you mean? <laughs> GitHub's main database is an SQL database ran on bare metal in their current data center. Do you understand what kind of pain this is going to be? <laughs> if you have ever worked with SQL in any form, it is just pain unless you're an SQL expert in which case you're rolling in your riches on some beach somewhere enjoying your life because once you become an expert within a year you can retire it, it is just such an arcane experience working with SQL and the fact that it funded such a booming database industry over the past decade or so and GitHub has bare metal SQL databases which means that my experience of migrating the SQL databases which were also on on-prem and we had multiples uh, of them, uh, like individual databases, I mean, I'm sure these guys also have multiple individual databases. I, it only makes sense architecturally, but migrating that thing into the cloud is, it still haunts me. Like sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I am just, you know, those dreams where you think you're late for your exam or you failed your exam or whatever. I have those, but about the SQL migrations that we had to do. How databases work on-prem and on-cloud is just a completely different ballgame. The fact that on-prem you have a fixed amount of servers that you can migrate and you can rely on, the, the handling and infrastructure of those servers is completely different from what it looks like on the cloud, simply because you're going to be using the cloud providers load balancing and distribution of the databases and replication and so on and so forth. It is just a completely different ball game. Now, I'm sure that GitHub has their team of experts that have been working on it for ages, and you do need deep integrated knowledge of how these databases work. But judging from my own experience, when we were doing the migration from our databases onto the cloud, our 
our experts, they were gone after the first acquisition of, of the company. And at that point, we were through acquisition three or four. Those guys were already sipping the martinis in Mexico. And you know what I'm saying? It was like a funeral home, reading through the git blame history of some people that had committed something. They leave one of those ominous comments of, beware dragons be lying here. And it's made by some Russian dude that wrote a function that not even copilot... <laughs> <laughs> can understand and it was committed 12 years ago you know he hand wrote that shit and you know that he is long gone and I, how i know this we went and scouted their linkedin pages and yeah they were all retired a very long time ago you could tell some of these people didn't give a shit when they were doing it some of them did give a shit but they were too smart for their own good so they didn't leave any comments because it just works brother i will always be working for this beautiful company i love it so much here and this happens before he gets granted a big fat check and that he's out but man it will be scary again if you work for github i'm really sorry sympathies goes out to you it will be a fun time and i am just hoping that their backups are solid and that we will not lose any work it's a bit scary to think about <laughs> Considering how GitHub is essentially a monopoly now, and I love GitLabs, but let's be honest, like GitHub is where open source projects live. And on the topic of availability and reliability, let's talk about the cloud outages that have been happening for the past couple of months regularly. The internet going down on its knees. Man, we're cooked. <laughs> I don't, again, this is not a Doomer video, but man, let's think about it. Seriously, AWS and Azure and to a degree, cloud, uh, Google Cloud is where the majority of the internet's traffic lives now. And by scale, AWS trumps basically everybody else. And this also makes me think that this is why this push for migrating everything into Azure is coming from. We need to beef up Azure because Azure is not performing as well as AWS. And we need to scale up the expenses and also the profit out of it. Because if you think about it, Logically, how does the split look like on Microsoft's quarterly review that they push out to the stakeholders? They have Azure as a service. Everybody looks at it because for Amazon, AWS is the big breadwinner. For Microsoft, it's definitely not Azure, but it is a failing investment. Maybe not a failing investment, but it's it's not an investment that is growing quite as rapidly, especially when they're trying to justify pumping a ton of money into AI and building out data centers. Who's going to be using these bloody data centers, brother? It has to be AI. And what is our biggest AI consumer? GitHub, of course. That's why we acquired it a couple of years ago, right? Let's pump more money into it. How they're going to do that? By merging everything together into a huge blob. The outages have been very scary, and this means that we're going to continue seeing outages rolling into the open source space at a very scary pace as we continue merging onto the three points of failure. I don't know, man. Open source is too valuable and way too many companies are relying on it that if Azure fails, a lot of businesses are going to fail. And maybe this is actually the big brain plan here. The big tech companies are considering their cloud services as their competitive mode. Maybe they're trying to take the same strategy where big banks know they are too big to fail. So even if they do fail, there's a financial crisis, whatever, they're going to get a bailout from the government. So they are not really afraid of pushing harder on different investments that might be too risky, but they don't really have any downside because they know they're going to get bailed out. I feel like this is where cloud providers are also going. They are just trying to monopolize and put a stranglehold on everything and really make sure that the internet is hosted on them. I don't know. That makes sense in my head. It's a little too conspiracy theorist of a take, but logically, why else are we doing this? What does this mean for the future? I think that we need to start realistically considering alternatives to GitHub as an open source community and as developers. I think self-hosting our Git repos is going to be a good move. As open source developers, obviously, you have to live on a platform. GitHub has by far the biggest audience. Discoverability is important. Maybe we do a mirrored approach where we replicate our repos on to other services and we push those as the main ones under our own documentation and websites will, would link to those alternative platforms. Maybe that's the move. We need to find a path forward that isn't as tied to Microsoft because Microsoft loves abandoning their products and loves just stumbling in its own giganticness. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a little scary. Before jumping into this video, I, I, I never really have a script for these things. I just have five bullet points and, and then I yap. 
But man, the more I talk about it, the more afraid I become because all of this seems to make a lot of sense. We know money wins at the end. So you really have to think from the perspective of these big companies, what's their motivation? Well, it is always money. It is always money. Please let me know your thoughts about this because genuinely, I didn't expect to get this uh, conspiracy theory uh, about it, but... It just makes too much sense. Tell me I'm wrong. Please give me some different takes on it. And like and subscribe. And thank you. Have a good day.